Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, it's Vandy. Hazel. We're back at another card fight Vanguard deck profiles. If you guys enjoyed, don't like, comment, subscribe, and donate to Patreon. So we'll start. Today we have Kagero, Lawkeeper. Yes, finally, the three weeks of Kagero decks. It's finally over. Thank God. But there is a lot to unpack with all these Kagero decks. So in each one, we had some form of a different type of playstyle. We had Dauntless, who was just... Uh, impossible to two to pass, followed by did retire three rear guards at once and or nuked gifts. Yes, Blazing Flare did the same thing with nuking gifts and nuking rear guards, but also kind of focused more on a soul blast, uh, I mean, guess mega blast aspect of the game, I guess. Kind of reviving that, at least what that's what it felt like. And Lawkeeper. He focused on binding rear guards. Very weird that Lawkeeper is the only one that binds rear guards, and I'm really. I know when they bring out set f six and seven or. No, like, what set are we on now? Seven and eight, I think it is. I don't know which set we're on now. I think it's five and six. But I hope that, I think they did say that they were going to do reverse units. And I know, we all know the reverse coming. There's no reason not to deny that. But I really hope they give us some support for Lawkeeper. Because Lawkeeper definitely feels like a deck that can be really good. And it's still a good deck now. But it feels like a two support. So let's go ahead and get started. First up, our starter today is Lizard Runner Undu, as per usual, 6k base, grade 0, boost, 10k shield. Auto ones rid upon, draw a card, then if your opponent's Vanguard's grade 1 or good, you get a quick shield ticket. Standard starter, not too special about it. You get a draw, you get a quick shield. It's perfectly fine. It's not combo because you're not playing Overlord to Clan, which means you don't deserve this. You don't, it means you don't deserve combo as your starter. So Undu is the backup one. Trigger Rise, we're on 4 draw, PG, and Wyvern Guard, Bardi. Grade 0, boost, 0 shield, 5k base, draw, trigger, you continue to sound 4 sounds on your deck, and auto guard circle, and place this card from your hand, choose one of your units, cannot be to the battle. And then we run 8 crits in Tar and Angry Horn Dragon. Now, if you're wondering why I'm not running 12 crits, is because I do think draws are slightly more helpful in this deck, because you want the hand cards to be able to out rear guard your opponent to death, especially because your vanguard can just give plus five to everyone. So you kind of want to take advantage of that by having rear guards. I can definitely see why you want crits for that, just so you can make more use of that power. And I can definitely see why. But I do prefer the draws for that reason, and also because PGs are a thing, and a lot of decks can hit for high numbers and nowadays and 30k guards, unless you if with you having to guard more possibly. I don't think the PG would kind of be worth switching out for, so I do prefer the PG, but if you want to run the 12 crit, you can. And then we have our 4 trigger, heal trigger, and mother orb dragon. I shouldn't need to explain at this point why I hate heal guardians, but if you want to, for me to explain it, the simple version is I do not like them because they are detrimental to my playstyle, and if you want a more explained version, go watch my video from about 3 weeks ago of a deck profile that probably explains it better. So that's why mother orb is here and not a heal guardian. On to the grade ones. Four copies of Flame of Hope Airmo. Grade one boost, 10k shield, AK base. Continues rear guards. Sorry, continues rear guards. Circle. During the battle that it boosts, it gets plus three and auto rear. When your opponent's rear guards retire during this turn, retire this unit and draw a card and counter charge one. Okay, so for all of you that are wondering, this deck, in terms of grade twos, I'm sorry, in terms of grade ones, is the same as Dauntless. And the grade twos are mostly the same, except for one, also the same as Dauntless. But the reason why Airmo is here is different from in Dauntless, because in Dauntless you could do a lot of plays, you're going to counter bust a lot, so you want to counter charge a lot. And while it is true here, in this deck you are more focused on trying to slowly nuke out their board, but take full advantage of the power, and you're going to nuke during your battle phase, which means this skill is not going to come in until the battle phase, which means, you know, you want to take advantage of that 11k booster. So technically speaking, this is here for the 11k boost and not the draw and counter charge skill, despite the fact, yes, that is also the reason why it's here. Drawing and counter charging is really good in this deck. So it helps take advantage of the maximum power that you get from Lawkeeper because it can make a 16k booster out of it, but then also it can get you a draw and counter charge when played properly in this deck. 4 of Airmo because they're really good grade 1. 4 copies of Lava Flow Dragon, grade 1 boost, 10k shield, AK base, continuous vanity rear guard circle during your turn, if you have more rear guards than your opponent gets plus 5. So ride this, call it during your first grade 1 turn while your opponent is also at grade 1, both of them are at 13k and you can rush. Cool. And then auto Vander Rear, when you're placed from hand, look at top 5, reveal to 1 grade 3 from among them, put it to your hand, shuffle your deck, and if you put a card to your hand, you gotta discard one. Okay, if you went second, once more, discard a quick shield, call a second copy of this, look at top 5, add a grade 3, I don't really care if you do, both of them get plus 5 because you do have more rear guards than your opponent, and you swing for 13 on two different attacks. That's the point of all flow. Works really good in an early rush, after that, he doesn't really do anything in the late game, or at least that's what I've noticed, the 13k, while helpful, doesn't really do anything in the late game, and it's, uh... 
but it's fairly good in the early game. It definitely helps for the push, and it definitely helps me search my materials because apparently Kagro grade threes just don't like showing up without me having to force them out with lava flow. So lava flow is a really good grade one as it gets a search and it works early in the early game. Four of. And then four copies of our last grade one, which is Dragon Knight He Shot. Grade one, boost, 10k shield, AK base. Also with lava flow, because you most likely will have more opponent, more rear cards than your opponent, you combine it with a long keeper that's poison 18k booster. Okay, anyways, back to he shot. Auto when it's placed from anywhere, counter boss one and soul boss one, draw a card, choose one of your opponents back with rear guards and kill it. So you know when you place it on rear guard, you pay the same cost as lock keeper to draw a card and kill it back or rear guard. Okay, that's fair. And, you know, this will probably set up for Lava Flow later, because, I mean, you know, 2 to 1 rear guard, that's pretty nice. And then Auto Winners Road Upon, look at top 5, reveal to 1 grade 3 or greater from among them, put it to hand and shuffle your deck. So out of your 12 grade 1s, 8 of them are possible ride targets, and Airmo is worst case scenario ride. So, you know, there's no real downside. I mean, obviously you want to ride Heat Shot, just because, like, yeah, next turn he's going to get you a possible free grade 3. But either way, he still works as a grade one that you call a rear guard because he can get you a draw and a nuke of a rear guard. So four copies of he shot. Also, he's just really cool looking. He looks kind of like a Alif, I guess, but with a spear and I like his hair more and I like the dragon that he's riding on. Grade two times. The only thing different in terms of grade twos from the Dauntless deck is that this is not, uh, what's it called? Uh, I'm trying to remember his name. <laughs> Berserk Dragon. Spillover Dragon instead of Berserk Dragon. Grade 2, Intercept, 5 gets Shield, 10k base at 3 copies. Auto Rear at the end of the battle that it attacked a Vanguard while boosted. Counter Boss 1, shove it to Soul, choose an opponent's Great Tour Less Rear Guard, and kill it. Here's where the Battle Phase killing comes in because you kind of. You don't want to nuke their field fully because of how Law Keeper works. If they have no rear guards, they get plus five. So you don't want to leave them with nothing. So what you want to do is if they have a full board, or regardless if they don't have a full board, you nuke most of their fuel, but you let them keep one rear guard. Then, you know, you boost this with an air mo, and then air mo, because they probably had no back row, air mo's boosting for 16 with a swing of 15. So, you know, you're going for 31k swing. Cool. If they don't block it, that's amazing because then you can counter boss one shove it to soul and kill an opponent's grade two or less rear guard and that's really good because then that means now they have no rear guards but you typically want to swing with this at the end so that they don't get power at all from it and you can use air mode during the battle phase after the attack to retire it draw a card and counter charge so pretty much it was a shove to soul to get a draw and nuke a rear guard skill instead of counter boss one shove to soul i mean you do lose two rear guards out of it but it's still a pretty nice combo Spillover definitely works in this deck as it allows you to nuke your opponent's rear guard strategically to where they are still going to have to guard hard to defend against you easily. So three copies of Spillover Dragon. Three copies of Bellicosity Dragon. 10k base, grade 2 intercept, 5k shield, auto vanguard, rear guard. When your opponent's rear guards are tired during turn, it gets plus 5k during the turn. Okay, so it doesn't really work that well with Lawkeeper as Lawkeeper doesn't retire. He binds, but with all of the grade 2s having retire effects, you know and the back of grade 3 having a retire effect. If you can't get onto Law Keeper, this thing hits for big enough numbers to where it's fine on its own, and Law Keeper will get rid of a good chunk of rear guard, but there'll always be like two rear guards for you to nuke, which means Bellicosity will always be a plus 10. So Bellicosity and combined with the Law Keeper's plus 5 skill is going to be a slightly deadly threat to your opponent. Definitely this is the deck where it does the least in and where he is probably a tech out option for something else, but I do think Bellicosity can serve his purpose in the deck, especially with the back of grade 3. So three copies of Bellicosity. Three copies of Tor Dragon. Grade 2, Intercept, 5k shield, 10k base, auto vanguard, sorry, act vanguard or rear guard. Once per turn, counter boss 1, put a normal unit from your drops on the bottom of the deck. Choose an opponent's grade 2 or less rear guard to kill it, and if your hand is 4 or less cards, draw a card. I cannot tell you how many times that ability has saved me and or the people that play this deck, as Tor just keeps netting top decks of uh, law keepers and force gifts and PGs and stuff like that, but then also sending your normal units back so you don't deck yourself out for later purposes and still get you a kill of a rear guard so you can come out with law keeper later. All around towards really good, definitely helps you set up if you're playing actively over aggressive that game, but then also just gets you a kill of a rear guard while also sending something back. So three cops of toward, he is very simple and he does cost a counter boss, which is the downside to him, but he is also very useful. And then we have our last grade two at four, which is Break Breath Dragon, our grade two of the ride line. So this is the one you preferably want to ride, but thankfully Torrid acts as a back of grade two. Uh, auto rear guard, when road, sorry, auto rear at the end of the battle that attacked. If your opponent's rear guard is retired this turn, retire, draw a card. So once more, you know, you got to use Torrid, Bellicott, sorry, not Torrid, but Torrid, 
or spell over or just swing into it to kill it but if you do kill it you get a draw by also killing this thing and auto once wrote upon and choose one of your opponent's rear guards retire if you did not retire draw a card the most ideal point with this deck is they have four rear guards you get rid of three of them via law keeper then you call break breath you call a spell over you call an air mode behind said spell over you go swing with break breath into one rear guard to kill it skill of break breath retire it draw a card Swing with Spillover into Vanguard, hopefully they still have a rearguard left, and then you Spillover, counter boss 1, shove to soul, kill a rearguard, that's great or less, skill of Aramonach, retire it, draw a card, counter charge 1, and now you've lost 3 rearguard circles, which means if they're playing something like Link Joker, 2 of their, I mean 3 of their possible locked targets are now gone, and 2 of them are in the front row, so unless they start calling locked cards from the top of the deck now, they are effectively screwed as they cannot um, prevent your multi-attack, which is really good in that case, because you know, it allows for combos, and then auto when it's wrote upon it, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, kill it if they did not kill you, draw a card. You know, makes it useful for either they call a rear guard during grade two, and or they went first and then they called a rear guard and you kill it, that's important to them, or they didn't go first, or they didn't call rear guards, and you just get a free draw out of it. Either way, Break Breath makes for a really good grade two, because he either nuts you a free draw, or gets you a kill, and can also be applied in the battle phase to um, sacrificing himself to get you a draw. Either way, Break Breath's a really good card in this deck, and allows for a neat little combo to avoid Link Joker plays four of. On to grade threes. Four copies of Exile Dragon. Grade 3, Twin Drive, Force Gift, 13k base. Act Vanguard or Rearguard once per turn. Counter Boss 1 and Soul Blast 1. Choose one of your opponent's rearguards and kill it. Okay, so this is the same cost as Log Keeper to bind multiple units at once, so definitely not as good. But I do like his art, and he can definitely get you a kill. And while you're sitting on him, you can combine it with Bellicosity, which is really nice. And he works on Vanguard or Rear Guard, so worst case scenario, you can also use him to retire. And Auto Rear, at the end of the battle that it attacked a Vanguard, if your opponent has no Rear Guard the same column as it, you may bounce it to hand. With this, with this deck, clearing a board, or at least a column, is extremely easy. Like, okay, clearing a column is extremely easy. Clearing a board, maybe not as easy, but you can definitely still do it if you went to it hard enough. And because Exile can bounce himself back to hand, you effectively say for some reason you didn't want to sit on Lawkeeper next turn because you knew your opponent might not just call rear guards or they might kill over their rear guards so they can sit on a plus 5k on their vanguard circle. Well, Exile, you can just ride during your next turn and then boom, even if you don't use his first skill, you know you're not giving your opponent plus 5. So it's always a good back of grade 3. Get your forces still, can be bounced to hand allow for multiple force gaining and still kills a rear guard and can help pump up Bellicosity if you have to sit on him. So it's a really decent back of grade 3 that can also work on rear guard. So 4 of Exile Dragon. And then our last unit is, and our last card, is 4 copies of Dragonic Law Keeper. Grade 3, Twin Drive, Force Gift, 13k base. I don't know why, but I didn't notice it before that this boy had four arms, but he used to be one of my favorite cards from, um, from, or not one of my favorite, but like something I like from Limit Break because when I first played Vanguard, I bought a booster set. The first booster set I bought was, um, the set that had Spectro Duke in it, and I just pulled all the Spectro Duke cards, but I pulled one copy of Duke himself, one copy of the grade two Vortimer, one copy of the starter, and then two copies of the grade one. And I never, and I was rarely ever able to pull off the ride lines. But I also ended up pulling Lockkeeper out of it and Pendragon. But the important part was Lockkeeper, and I really liked playing Lockkeeper, even though it was rare when I could play him because I only had one copy of it. But it was still pretty fun playing it when I could. So I was always, I was really happy when I saw that we were getting this card back. So auto rear, van, eh, at the start of the bat, each battle phase, both yours and your opponents, counter boss one and soul boss one, your opponent chooses one of their rear guards for every three of yours and their rear guards and binds it. At the end of the turn, your opponent calls those bound cards back to rear guard, and your opponent act, cannot activate auto abilities from the call space. Basically on place abilities, but the good, but also that means the auto abilities of your other units. So not only the abilities of the cards that get placed from it, but also the abilities of the cards that activate when other units are placed. So that's really good that he nullifies those. But also, yes, your opponent does get to pick the rear guards that get bound. But if it wasn't for that, you could just pick the two front. You could just pick all the front rear guards, and then they lose out on the attacks, which make this deck a bit too stall and controlly. But you know, it works out though, because if you have a full board of five and they have a full board of five, assuming that they're not playing Excel deck, you nuke three rear guards. So technically speaking, you only need a grand total of nine rear guards between the two of you. So one of you needs a full board five and the other one needs a board of four. So 
It's still pretty good though, because you can get rid of three rear guards, and then you can use things like break breath to kill one of the front row ones, and then you spill over to kill the other front row one or back row one, but you prefer the one to kill the front row one because hopefully they had no back row left. And this is really good for that. And the continuous vanguard, if your opponent has no back row rear guards, all of your units get plus five, including himself, during both players' turns. And then if your opponent's vanguard is a greater to a greater and they have no rear guards, because plus they get plus five active on their turn as well. So the downside is they could get power off this. The good side is they don't get power off this unless they're at grade three. <laughs> so if they if you went first and they have no rear guards, this is an 18k. Uh, this is an 18k. All of these are 15s. These are all 13s, except this is an 18, and then this is a 16 booster. So you get high numbers. You can swing, and the only thing they can do to stop you is not lose all their back or rear guard circles. But that involves them losing some interceptors in the front row too, and you know they might just still lose those back or rear guard circles anyways. So. Yeah, law keeper, really fun to stare down, I gotta say. Like, you get some rear guard nukes, and it's fun. You get power. Unfortunately, it's restricted to back row rear guard circles being open, but then again, if it wasn't, that would just be a free plus five to your whole front row at all, or all units at all times, which is really good. All around law keeper is pretty good with that skill. He gets you power. He does give your opponent power to make it fair, but let's be fine. Like, this deck could nuke units really easily and could get a hell of a lot of power off it. And he can apply battle phase interruption during both players' turns. So if they ever go hyper aggressive, you can just punish them for it by forcing them to buy in three rear guards. So Lockheed is really good in that regard. And then gift wise, five force ones, five force twos. Force one, when acquired, you put on a vanguard or rear guard circle, and the unit on that circle gets plus 10 during your turn. It can be stacked and put on the same circle multiple times. So you put three on the same circle, plus 30. You put five, plus 50, plus seven, plus 70, etc. Force two, it can also be put on vanguard rear when acquired, and it can be put on the same circle multiple times, but it cannot be stacked because the original critical of the unit on that circle becomes two. If it was, says the original critical becomes plus one, or sorry, if it says the critical becomes plus one, then yes, okay, it would be stackable because then it would be like two on the same circle it would make it three crit. But in this case, because it says original critical becomes two, that means two of them don't make it become three crit. It makes it become two crit, which is sad, but you know, this deck being able to get 5k really easily you could just play a bunch of force twos with it and then just hit decently good numbers with double critical on all of them for game really quickly. So yeah, and then we have our quick show, which is when one of your attacks is plus 5k power for the battle. You know, use it for discard fodder for things like, uh, where is it? Use it for discard fodder for things like Lava Flow and or your PG. And that's pretty much it for the deck. So I hope you guys enjoyed. All Around Lock Keeper is definitely an interesting deck. It's... It's weird thinking about it. It's not like a whole deck that is focused on big brain. Maybe it involves a little bit of big brain plays, but not a deck that involves too much big brain plays. Still, it gets very aggressive. Still, is very powerful. I do prefer first Force 2 with this deck, as this deck can get a decent amount of numbers, and having extra criticals is really helpful compared to Force 1. Then again, if they're already high damage early, just to put Force 1 on your units and make them hit harder. But otherwise, this deck is pretty dangerous, and it definitely will put your opponent into a sticky situation. If they don't have to, if they don't figure out how to guard this soon, because you know, constantly losing three rear guards, two to three rear guards each turn, and also being una being able to ah, being unable to use auto abilities when those units are called back is pretty bad. And then proceeding for your opponent to get plus five if you have no back or rear guard circles, it's all around pretty dangerous. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join to the Patreon, join Discord, follow Twitch, and I'll see you on the next one. Don't forget to stand up, your vanguards. I'm not going to